Hello clever people, and welcome to my review for Teenage Midlife Crisis, or as it is normally called, Everything Everything. So this film features on a girl who has never been outside. When she was about two months old, she was diagnosed with a certain symptom towards her uh, blood so that she couldn't fight off infection well. So even just going outside, being exposed to things, she felt extremely sick, she felt extremely weak, and she couldn't really go outside. So basically, she stuck inside this house, and when she turns 18, she really wants to go out. And when she sees a boy outside and thinks that she's fallen in love with him, she decides to risk her entire life to go off just to explore the world and explore all it has to offer. In case you can tell by the lack of enthusiasm in my voice, I was really not excited to see this movie. This was, on, this was probably my least anticipated movie of the year. Nothing about it looked appealing, and after this, this awful monstrosity that they called the Emoji Trailer, I was absolutely certain that this was going to be the worst film of the year. It just, it looked awful. The trailers were terrible. Everything about it just was so cringeworthy and so stupid. So I went into this movie having practically rock-bottom expectations. I was expecting something on the level of the Avatar The Last Airbender, or one of the worst films of all time. And what I came out with wasn't that. I definitely overreacted with my expectations with this movie, because this movie is just stupid teen stuff. It's honestly got a few competent areas, which is something that surprised me, because the pace in this film and some of the direction is actually pretty competent, and it isn't absolutely awful. They have a few scenes in this movie where instead of just having them normally text, they're in like a cafe, or they're like floating in space or something. It's nothing great, but at least there's some creativity to it. At least it's not just them sitting down with text, uh, just text coming on screen as they text back and forth. At least it's not as stupid as that, because this film does have a couple good aspects to it. Something that's also good about this movie is that the music wasn't annoying, because most of these teen films that feature all these pop songs, they're, abs they're forced in there, they're shoved in there, they're crammed in there and they don't fit there at all. However, in this film, they actually did a fairly good job at making the song fit the mood and what was going on. However, that's basically where the good things end for everything, everything. This movie is very, very bad. It's got a lot of bad qualities, and maybe it's the fact that I was expecting something so awful that I'll give it a higher grade than it probably deserves, but honestly, this film is just extremely bad. From the opening, which is just straight up exposition spoon fed to you i could already tell that this movie was going to be unsubtle in every way and that's exactly what it is this movie has absolutely no shade of subtlety they have quite a few interesting themes in here however they're ruined by the fact that a character needs to type out the theme on a computer or a character needs to narrate what the theme is as if we wouldn't understand it if they hadn't said it to us because i hate that when movies do that when movies feel the need to tell the audience exactly what the theme is because they're too stupid to understand it. It's really annoying and everything, everything really suffers from this. It's constantly feeling the need to tell you that this girl is motivated by love and that's why she goes outside because love is a strong emotion. Rather than just showing that or just, you know, letting you infer that, they decide to have her go on a computer and type in love is everything, period, everything, period. It just, it's, uh, completely unnecessary. It's also extremely unsubtle in the way that it tries to show what the characters are feeling, because it has many ways throughout the entire film that it tries to have the characters say what they were feeling in a certain situation. Rather than just having it be awkward, they feel the need to tell the people around them that, oh, that was an awkward encounter. But something that was really bad in this movie was a certain scene between the two of them where they had text at the bottom expressing their thoughts. It was just unnecessary. It really didn't need to be there. Something about this movie that feels very, very uninspired is the cinematography. 
I, I don't recall a single shot in this film that was interesting in any way. There's one shot in particular that I remembered. It wasn't anything great, but a girl was stepping outside, and it was just her foot, and it was her slowly putting her foot down. And that showed how big of a deal it was that she was going outside. I didn't really need that in a shot, but at least it was something, because the rest of the shots in this film, about 90% of them are medium shots. Just normal, plain, boring medium medium shots. And then about 8%, the other 8% is about just close-ups, which also aren't very impressive. There's no wide takes in this film. There's no one take so that the camera's moving and just it's just one take. There's one shot that I mentioned was interesting and a couple other shots that you could tell had at least a bit of effort put into it, but for the most part the cinematography in this film is just atrocious. When you shoot something in such a boring way, there's no reason to really be interested in it because you're just it's really boring and it's plain. And why should you be interested in something that's so boring? And also the dialogue in this film is extremely cringy. I know it's supposed to be awkward in a few instances, but even when it's not, it's just absolutely awful. It's just awfully written, and it's really, really bad. It gets okay at a few times, but for the most part, it's, also, it's just really, really bad. And also, something that made me very angry in this movie is the way that the boy was represented. Not him himself, but his relationship with his father. Because he has an abusive father, and his fa they show his father in public hitting his son. Okay, I guess there was no other way that the girl could have seen that happening, but what ha why would he do that in public and where anyone could see him? And also afterwards, the mother is talking to the girl saying, Oh, I could try to get someone to talk to Ollie, which is the boy's name. I could see if I could try to get someone to talk to him to make sure it's okay. You know, why don't you try to make it so that the daughter, him, and the mother can get away from this abusive man? Why don't you call up protection services or something like that? Why are you just, uh, why are you just offering therapy. That really just didn't make any sense. Now, at this point, I sort of feel like I'm nitpicking. Look, everything, everything, it's competent in a few areas. It's really bad in a few areas. Overall, this is just a forgettable, disposable movie. I thought it would be far worse than it was. However, it really wasn't, and that's probably why I'll end up giving everything, everything a 4.25 out of 10. Alright, that concludes my review for Everything Everything. What are your thoughts on this film? Comment in the comment section below and let me know. I am Robert Burke, and this has been The Clever Critics. Goodbye.